Hello, I'm Zach Clark, Oakland-based printmaker and one half of Shoot Studio. Uh, Shoot Studio is a collaborative risograph uh, studio um, that kind of exists mostly in my garage at the moment, uh, along with Amy Burek. Uh, Amy is uh, also a printmaker and makes some really cool books uh, about the internet, typically. Um, and she pr publishes under the name Awkward Ladies Club. Uh, she's actually had a Rizzo for a bit longer than I have, um, so she deserves probably more of the credit for what we're doing than I do. Um, a Rizograph is a machine that looks kind of like a photocopier. Um, some of you may have, be familiar with mimeograph machines. Um, and they're kind of, kind of like a, an automated screen printing. Um, everything's done one color at a time through a stencil, uh, but has the automated output of something like a photocopier. Um, the reason that you are hearing from me now is that um, Amy and I, when we started the studio, we wanted it to be a space that we could do something that was um, a way for us to kind of bridge the things that each of us were doing within our own publishing practices. Um, we traveled a lot for fairs and tabled a lot together. And we're already doing a lot of work together and decided we want to do something together that was a little more cohesive and a little more generative and could share some more resources. Uh, the first project that we did was this collection of books for this year's Kala Art Auction. Um, we worked with a handful of artists that have uh, worked at Kala or associated with Kala in some way, um, including Krista Wright, Veronica Graham, Megan Polin, uh, Tallulah Terrell, and then um, I made a book myself. Uh, like I said, I'm a printmaker, but I originally came to art through photography, and that's still where most of my work is coming from um, at its core. Um, I do a lot of shooting on these kind of plastic, crappy cameras uh, that are sort of point-and-shoots that have, like, faux ed uh, focusing. Uh, but they give you these really interesting, soft images that allow you to do some uh, multiple exposures on a single frame. Um, so with that, I may have a photo that looks something like this, that then I'll scan in the full negative, and when I put it through the Rezo, I'll have a print that looks something like this. Uh, <clears throat> those images may then end up in a book that's something like this, that uh, incorporates images and text. Uh, but then, uh, also sometimes my work is just uh, a little more uh, kind of collage based, a little more fun. A lot of this is happening right here on the scanner bed. Um, could be some drawings, could be plants that I found from my garden. And each of those are still going to be printed the one color at a time through the Rizograph. Like again, some more screen printing. Uh, a lot of what I do is books. Uh, most of what I do is in some form of publication, but sometimes they, they branch beyond that. Like this project with my friend Josh Gannon that is a combination of our photographs from um, Hawaii when we met at a book fair um, that is a really giant accordion book. Um, along with all my personal work, a big part of what I do is publishing for others. Um, I um, work under the name National Monument Press where um, I'll make a whole sort of collaborative set of books that are usually the people that are not involved with printmaking um, too terribly much, they usually artists from some other form. Uh, this book with Julia Dickburner um, is a collage-based book that we made together that um, she took the first uh, square of a page and would cut it up and we would um, scan that and make prints from that, which we would then, um, I would take those scraps and come over and make the next color for us to have these kind of color wash pages. Um, outside of Rezo, because um, Amy and I both do a lot of things um, outside of Rezo. We both do a lot of letterpress, um, really, kind of all forms of printmaking. Rezo just happens to be the biggest thing we do. Um, this book was a collaboration with um, an artist, Aaron Martinez, called Leaving, uh, in which we went to Mexico together and she carved linoleum blocks of things that she saw around town um, and then wrote some poetry to go along with it. Uh, we scanned the linoleum together in Mexico and then when we got back, um, I handset all the type and printed it, and then um, Aaron bound it into this nice book we've got here. Uh, lastly, sometimes they may also um, be uh, projects where I'm taking a lot of the work straight from the artist. Um, this book with Kristen Huff. Um, they are paintings from contestants of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, and she then sends me the digital images, which then I um, translate into digital files that I then will break down into a CMYK, like a traditional printmaking or traditional process printing. Um, and they'll then go through the Rizzo one color at a time. Um, and then they end up having this really nice translation from when they were paintings to these um, almost kind of wood blocky um, sort of prints because of uh, the flatness of each color. 
From there, why don't we go check out the studio? So here we are in the studio. Um, like I said, um, it's in the garage, but it's where we do all of our printing. Um, I've got some letterpress equipment back here, um, but uh, the main thing we're here to talk about is our tin rizos. We've got two of them right here um, that both do some different things. Um, up here on the walls, we've got uh, test pages for some prints that um, we're working on or some things we've recently finished. Um, or just some things for us to figure out the machines a little better. Uh, I've got two machines here in the garage. Uh, one, my older machine here, an RZ310. It prints um, eight and a half by 11, uh, one color at a time, and you can only use the scanner bed. Um, this machine here, our newer machine, prints two colors at a time. Um, and so it has two of these drums in here. This is where kind of all the magic happens. It's um, a big drum that has this rotating cylinder. And then here on it are these pieces of paper called masters. Within that, when you send an image through the machine, um, either using the scanner bed or by using the computer hookup, um, it cuts a stencil very similar to screen printing. Uh, and so then with this, everything prints one color at a time. Uh, except with this machine, like I mentioned, since there are two cylinders, we can print two colors at a time. Uh, this machine can print up to 11 by 17. That's the largest size you can get on a Rezo here in America. Um, there are a few in Europe that work at 22, uh, but 11 by 17 is a really good size um, for you to have a lot of options for making books and zines and that sort of thing, which is kind of the core of what a lot of Rezo's happening with. The ink comes in tubes like this that then go into those drums. It's based on a soy and rice brand based oil with some natural pigments. Um, so it's oil based, but it never actually really dries. Um, it can kind of smudge forever. Also, the more layers of ink that sit on top of each other, the higher possibility you're going to have of any sort of smudging. Uh, I'm working on a print right here um, for our panel that's coming up next week. And with this, uh, I thought it'd be funny to make a handmade, hand collaged uh, print for a virtual panel. Um, and so with that, um, I have made three different layers of image. And each of these will print, I would scan and print individually. Um, I've already got the first two layers done. This one here. So, you know, I've got this in the olive green. And then the following is in this violet here. And then I have another color already ready to go in here with our indigo. I'm just going to start that up right here. And then from there, we've got our final color, this darker layer here. As you saw, it printed 10 copies and about 15 seconds. Um, I did some setup beforehand, there's some things you gotta do in the machine. But once you actually get going, the addition, um, you can print a lot of copies very quickly, which is part of the reason that this is um, such a great medium for zines, books, posters, that kind of thing. Um, also, the price per copy is really, really low on this. Um, the consumables are pretty cheap. Um, and once you get the machine, um, you know, it's pretty easy to keep things going. Uh, the machines are a little harder to find these days as this has become more popular. Um, you know, they're, uh, you've really got to scour the internet for them. And most of these machines are used. Both of these are over 10 years old. Uh, but the, the technology is still kind of going. They're still putting out new machines. So um, there are things you can still buy new ones, but a lot of people are trying to get the old ones um, just that are a little cheaper out there. Uh, with that, we're able to run uh, seven different colors off of the smaller uh, machine. With this, we have six different colors. Um, and with those, you can't make any of your own colors. Everything is kind of pre-made, whatever is in the tube. So um, what's cool about this and what I really love about Rezo is that every single person with a Rezo, they're going to have different colored drums. You can change the color of the drum, it takes some work, but you can really make it so the color system that you have is yours, um, which um, really makes it so that every shop kind of has their own color character, which is pretty cool. Um, that's it from in here. Uh, if you have any more questions about Rezo, get a hold of me or Amy anytime. Um, shootstudio.com. You can email me. Um, I'm sure we'll have some information somewhere and so around this video. Uh, cool. Thanks for your time.